Uh, welcome everyone to our online virtual tour today for Betty Ford Alpine Gardens as part of the North American Rock Garden Society online conference, uh, which we're very excited to take part in. My name is Nick Hortens and I am the curator of plant collections here at Betty Ford Alpine Gardens. Um, I've been here for almost 10 years now um, here in Vail, Colorado. Our gardens are located at 8,200 feet, um, so we're located right at the base of Vail Mountain. Um, it's a very big tourist destination, so we get people from all over the world visiting us um, throughout the year. And we're very excited to show you um, our little home here in the mountains. Where I'm sitting right now is our education center, which was built five years ago and transformed the organization into what it is today. So this is our Alpine house, and uh, this Alpine house was built with the building here in 2015. Um, and it was inspired by a trip I took over to uh, Scotland and England as part of the Diana Atchison Fund to learn about Alpine houses in um, Europe and to understand what we wanted to build. And so after visiting many um, amazing botanic gardens there and seeing what they did, and each had a different style, we came back with an idea that we wanted to do more of a planted landscape style. And so we were able to find uh, tufa and that helped us uh, create this um, tufa wall. Um, and we wanted to also kind of blend it back in with a mural here um, of the Colorado landscape in the mountains. Um, in this alpine house, we uh, have around almost 200 species of plants now, um, including bulbs and many other um, alpines that may not do as well outside for us, uh, such as Dionysia and a few other South American plants. Um, we are happy to say that uh, things have lived pretty well in here on the Tufa, and we do have um, quite a vast number of plants from all around the world, so no one particular geographical collection in here. So as well as our alpine house, uh, we have a trough garden outside that uh, stays outside year round. It allows us to grow a lot of different uh, plants um, in a small area. Um, and people have really become quite um, fascinated with it here up in Vail Valley. And uh, in the early spring, this is, this is definitely one of the most colorful areas um, around the building and around Ford Park. Um, we have well over um, 100 different plants in, in this collection and we do all sorts of different styles with different rocks that we've collected throughout Colorado, such as oil shale um, and granite and limestone. Some of the very rare things that we are able to grow in these troughs that do better in troughs are Pensamen doublis, which is a threatened uh, Pensamen here that grows only in uh, a small area of Garfield County. And uh, that's something that we've done conservation um, work on. We're very happy with uh, how the troughs have turned out over the last four or five years. So this is our volunteer tool cabin and tool shed um, where we meet volunteers every Mondays and Thursdays for half a day when they help us uh, with the gardens. Um, but today we have uh, Melissa Stevens who just graduated from Longwood Professional Gardener Program and Nicole Cosmany 
um, our two horticultural uh, interns for the summer. And um, do you guys want to explain what you're doing today? Yeah, so we're getting ready to plant our new crevice garden that's dedicated to plants from the caucuses. Um, and so we have a whole slew of plants that are from different vendors and some of them have different nativities. So we're just trying to organize those right now and especially um, separate out the plants from the caucuses such as these right here. And yeah, that's what we're doing. So we're in the aspen grove here uh, at the very top of the gardens. Um, this garden is dedicated to native plants of the montane life zone here in Colorado. So the common plants you may find are Mertensia, Aquilegia, Pilictrum, Anemone, Dodecathion, um, and many other different grass species and sedge species. So this garden is more shady than uh, the other areas of the garden and lends itself well to growing some of those more woodland plants. Um, even as well as cyclopediums and uh, some of those columbines that like a little bit more shade. It's also a great place for people to relax and read a book. It's next to many waterfalls and it's very soothing in meditation. So this is our original crevice garden that was built in, with the rock garden in 2000. And, um, this was uh, inspired by the Czech rock gardeners. Uh, the original style of this garden isn't as uh, modern as it is today. However, this is uh, one of our largest collection of alpines from around the world. Um, this is why it's called the International Alpine Crevice Garden. Um, right now it is coming into peak bloom. Uh, many of the campanulas and uh, asperulas and uh, veronicas are taking the show at the moment. Um, some of our earlier irises um, have faded and some of the gentians are starting to fade. Uh, but this goes throughout a series of different colors and waves. Right now the blues and purples are especially um, amazing and as it kind of fades it will turn into white and then pretty much end by the end of June. So I'm sitting right next to our native rock wall and our Colorado Alpines collection. Uh, this is one of my favorite areas to um, actually garden in because of the rock wall here. It gives us so much vertical height. Um, it's a lot of fun to climb around on and it allows us to grow a lot of different plants in these different crevices and nooks. Um, a lot of different microclimates throughout this wall um, that really lend itself well to like cupra and telesonics, um, columbine and, and the um, of course, pensamen um, so that you see behind me that are blooming. Behind me is also the waterfall, uh, which spans about 100 feet uh, from the top to bottom and enters into a large pool at the basin, surrounded by a wetland garden um, that we grow a lot of different native wetland plants in. Our uh, national plant collection uh, comprises of uh, about 90 taxa of native plants, many of them um, grown from wild collected seed. Um, that we go out into the Alpine each uh, summer and collect and then grow um, for the garden's collection and for uh, seed banking as well. So Colin and I are here uh, at the new Caucasus garden that we just built um, and this is a dedication to a new geographical collection that we wanted to expand on with the Alps garden. Um, we have a Silk Road garden, we have a South African garden, um, we have a Himalayan garden, um, and then an international crevice garden at the very top, which you saw earlier. But we really wanted to create a new modern crevice garden, and so we really well, wanted to focus on getting some big height and big rocks in here, and a lot of interesting plants from the Caucasus. So I'll let Colin talk a little bit about what he's doing. Colin Lee Horticulturist at Betty Ford Alpine Gardens today doing the accessioning for the Caucasus Garden behind me, which is simply going through writing down all the Latin names for the plants, the source meaning the nursery that they came from, and then the amount of plants going into the garden. That way we can just keep records over time on what is living in this garden, what's doing well, what we need to bring in more of, and just getting a nice plant records system for it. This is our new Silk Road garden that we built two years ago. 
um, and uh, dedication to uh, me traveling over to uh, Central Asia, to Tajikistan and Uzbekistan on a trip with Green Tours. Um, and I wanted to get inspired um, on what plants grew there and um, what was like in those countries since it's very similar in climate, has a lot of mountains. Um, these are countries that are not often explored too much. Um, it allows us to be to really kind of go from China all the way um, to the end of the Silk Road, which is pretty much near Turkey. Um, so we wanted to really um, create different microclimates in here um, and different planting pockets. And in the first year, it was very sparse, had a lot of rock, but within two years, it's really grown. Um, it really takes shape into midsummer with different perennials. So our Silk Road garden is also adjacent to our perennial garden, Himalayan garden, European Alps garden, and then the new Caucasus garden that you just saw. Um, and so all of these gardens are part of our geographical Alpines of the World collection. So we're now getting towards the end of the tour, and uh, this is where the original perennial garden started in 1988 uh, with a group of volunteers who were all friends with Betty Ford and uh, wanted a little plot of land to um, garden, and the town agreed to give them some space. Um, and so it started with one small perennial bed and then grew, um, and then it was dedicated to Betty Ford in 1988. Uh, this trickling waterfall is a gift of uh, Gerald Ford and Betty Ford. So as you can see, almost a little bit behind me, we're still actually on the very end of uh, tulip season here, which uh, for most of the country seems really, really late. But a lot of our perennials are now starting to take over. In front of me here is our oldest part of the garden, which I was talking about earlier, um, where a lot of the perennials will start to take center stage throughout the midsummer. So right now the rock garden takes the show, but the perennials later on will really take over for uh, July and August. And then into September and October, um, the colors of the aspens and the mountainside here are really where the color is. Thank you all for coming on this tour. Um, and I'm very excited that we were able to be a part of this. I wanna say thank you so much to North American Rock Garden Society for inviting us. Um, we hope that you guys get here in the future and get to see this in person.